Hello, Miss Barquette's kindergarten class. Um, again, my name is Miss Mallory, and I'm from the Kleinen Street Project, which is an organization that brings drama class into the classrooms. Um, I'm so sorry that I only got to meet you once um, before all of this started to happen, and I'm sure that you're looking for some ways to let some energy out while you're at home and your parents are working hard and taking care of you. Um, so let's give your parents and guardians just a couple of minutes off and we'll learn some drama. Now each lesson only takes about 30 minutes. Um, I'll have about 11 lessons for you, um, 12 including the lesson that I gave you about a month ago um, before we all left school. So. Uh, again, my name is Miss Mallory. I'm with the Kleinen Street Project, and I just want to go over some things that we learned in that first class. So, first of all, what is drama? If you know the answer, you are welcome to say it out loud now. What is drama? It's a very good answer. <laughs> um, drama. Uh, in this class, for drama class, we are going to learn how to tell stories. So drama is telling a story. A story could be a movie or a book. For drama class, it's usually a play. Um, Miss Barquette's class, for you, it is the story Rosie Revere Engineer. And that's by Andrea Beatty. So I read you Rosie Revere Engineer on your first day. Um, and I will have another recording of me reading that story out loud to you. Um, so yes, drama is learning how to tell stories. Now, what do we use to tell those stories and who is telling those stories? Well, first of all, for drama, you are telling the story. And for drama class, you are an actor. You're an actor in everyday life. You are an actor in your own story, um, but actors, you know, they can have other tools like costumes or props, things that you bring on stage, but you actually have three tools on you right now that can help you tell a story or even just act out your everyday life. So if you remember what those three tools are, what are those three tools? I'm using one of them right now. As we were doing warm-ups, we were using this first tool and warming that up. So what is this first tool? So the first tool of an actor is your body. It's something that you have on you already. It's something that you have taken a few years to get used to and learn how to use. And it's also a tool for acting. So you can use your body to tell a story. Um, for example, you're telling a story with your face, with your eyebrows, with your eyes, maybe how your mouth is. If, uh, if I look like this, I'm probably either confused or disappointed. If I look like this, my body is telling you that I am happy or joyful. So that is the first tool of an actor. So let's all do this together. The first tool of an actor is your, and let's say it out loud, your body. So pat your body, show us what that is. The first tool of an actor is your body. The second tool of an actor is something else that I've been using for the past 10 minutes or so. What am I using to tell you and to teach you it's coming out of my mouth right now. You can say it out loud if you know the answer. What is the first tool, or I'm sorry, the second tool of an actor? That's right, it's your voice. So your voice comes out of your mouth. You use that to tell stories every day. You tell your parents or guardian about your day at school or how you're feeling and you're telling them your stories by using your voice. And if I sound like this, I'm probably really sad or upset, but if I sound like this, then I can be really excited. And that's how you can tell that I'm excited is using my voice. Or if someone is yelling, maybe they're angry, but if someone is whispering, maybe they're trying to tell a secret. That is how 
how the voice is your second tool as an actor. Let's go over this again. The second tool of an actor is your voice. Go ahead and say it out loud and do this, this action every time. So the second tool of an actor is your voice. Now, the third tool is something that you can't see with your bare eyes. I mean, maybe, kind of, but um, it's not something that you can look at me and say, yeah, she's using that as a tool. It comes out of your head and it helps you make decisions and tell stories and it starts with an eye. If you know the answer, feel free to say it out loud. This is the gesture for it. The third tool of an actor is your imagination. If you guys watch SpongeBob, then you know what I'm talking about. So the third tool of an actor is your imagination. Let's all do this together. Imagination. It's the third, third tool of an actor. And an imagination helps tell, your imagination helps tell a story because you take what's in your head and what you, um, what your version of the story is and it brings it to life, right? So you wouldn't be able to tell a story or even hear a story if you didn't have that imagination, right? So, um, if you are telling me about your day at school, I'm using my imagination to picture what it is that you're going through or it's um your imagination you're using your imagination to envision it to see it in your head to be able to make the words and use the body language to tell me the story so your imagination can be used to write stories to tell them out loud maybe to draw um to sing um, just to imagine anything. So a part of imagination is imagine. So it's what you, what you see and hear. It's the creative side of your brain. Um, so again, the third tool of an actor is your imagination. So the three tools of an actor are your body, your voice, and your imagination. Now, um, something that we are going to learn today. That was what we learned uh, last time I saw you about a month ago. Um, what we are going to learn today is what a tableau is, and that's T-A-B-L-E-A-U. It's okay, you don't have to worry about the spelling of it, um, but it should be tableau. And a tableau is a frozen picture of something. So if I were to give you a frozen picture of a frozen picture of a, gosh, what's a good one? A butterfly. Frozen picture of a butterfly, right? How would I use my body to give you a frozen picture of a butterfly? Maybe like this. Is this a butterfly? Are these my wings? You could do this. Or um, a tableau of someone who is working really hard on a test is like this. Maybe with the pencil in his hand. Right? So a tableau is a frozen picture. A tableau is a frozen picture of something. So we're going to play an activity. We're going to play a game. Um, but first, we need to warm up. You can stay seated for this warm up. But definitely take this time to use your energy and move your body around. First off, I want you to reach above your head. So act like there's candy in the ceiling. So reach, reach your hands up above your head. You can even act like you're climbing a rope. Now, let go of your fingers. Drop your fingers, drop your wrists, drop your elbows, and then drop your shoulders. Now, take a crayon. This is a crayon in my head. Put it on top of your head like this and draw some circles with your head with that crayon onto the ceiling. Draw four circles. Now do it the other way four times. Very slowly. Now I want you to take that crayon, take it off of your head, 
break it in half and stick each half on your shoulders here and one here now draw circles on both sides of the room with the crayons on your shoulders let's do four backwards one two three and four now four forwards one two three and four just heard some bones cracking <laughs> okay now take these crayons put them back together just put it away for now set it to the side now I want you to give me a superhero chest so what does a superhero chest look like um, for me, a superhero chest is nice and big and proud and powerful. So let's do superhero chest. Now let's do a villain chest. Villain kind of just gets small and tiny and evil, right? Now let's go back to superhero chest. Big and proud and out. And then villain chest. Bam, small. Shrink. Now, superhero chest again. Now, villain chest. Superhero chest. Now, villain chest. Oh, okay. Good job. Now, I want you to create a ball of energy in between your hands like this. So, clap your hands and use your hands. Now, clap them together and create a warm ball of energy. So, it becomes nice and warm. Now wake up your body with this ball of energy. Start off with your head, back of your head, your face, your arms, shoulders, let's go to your chest, go like this, ah, uh, go to your belly, and your back, and your hips, and your thighs, now your legs and your calves even do your feet. Okay, now I want you to warm up your face. So make your face nice and big like this. Eyes big, mouth big, now small. Big, now small. Two more times. Big, now small. Big and small. Okay. Now we need to warm up our voices and our mouth. So first you're gonna blow your lips out like a horse, but don't make any sound and don't make any vibrations with your mouth. You just go like this. Now you can play with sound and vibrate in your lips. Play with some sound. Okay, now uh, let's go ahead and warm up our voices and this tool here, our face, our body, our mouths. We're gonna do this by going through the alphabet. So with every letter that you say, don't just say A. I want you to use your entire face to do the alphabet. So if I say A, it's A. So make sure to use your cheeks and your lips and your nose and your eyes to do the alphabet. We're gonna start at the beginning. Ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, 
B W X Y and Z. So hopefully your cheeks are all warmed up and loosened now. Now let's get into some tongue twisters. I have a couple for you. If you know them on your own, you can do your own, but I'll start off with a couple. Unique New York. You know you need unique New York. Now say it again with me. Unique New York. You know you need unique New York. Now say it a little bit faster. Unique New York. You know you need unique New York. Unique New York. Unique New York. You know you need unique New York. <laughs> you know you need unique New York. Unique New York, unique New York, you know you need unique New York. Now let's try this next one. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. You might know this one already. Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair. So Fuzzy Wuzzy wasn't very fuzzy, was he? Let's do it a little bit faster. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair. So Fuzzy Wuzzy wasn't very fuzzy, was he? Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair. So Fuzzy Wuzzy wasn't very fuzzy, was he? Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair. So Fuzzy Wuzzy wasn't very fuzzy, was he? A little bit faster. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair. So Fuzzy Wuzzy wasn't very fuzzy, was he? And one more. The big black bug bleeds blue black blood. But the little black bug bleeds blue. The big black bug bleeds blue black blood, but the little black bug bleeds blue. The big black bug bleeds blue black blood, but the little black bug bleeds blue. A little bit faster. The big black bug bleeds blue black blood, but the little black bug bleeds blue. Oh my gosh. Good job. Give yourself some round of applause. So that first week, I read to you Rosie Revere, Engineer, um, and what we talked about afterwards was who are the characters, um, and the characters in the story are Rosie Revere, we have, let's see who else is in this, her uncle, who she loved most, and that's Zookeeper Fred. Um, the other character in the story is her aunt, I think. So we have her aunt, oh, great, great aunt Rose. So the three characters in the story are Rosie Revere, uh, her uncle Zookeeper Fred, and great, great aunt Rose. Okay, um, who is the story about? The story is about Rosie Revere, and she wants to be an engineer, um, and she she's always working and building things and the first person that she tries to make something for is her uncle zookeeper fred but she doesn't really do a good job at it and he kind of laughs at her um but in a, in a very loving way but he laughs at her and she was very embarrassed she looked at the cheese hat that she made him and she was really embarrassed that it wouldn't help um what did it um she made him a hat to keep snakes off of his head from parts of a fan and some cheddar cheese spray, which everyone knows keeps the pythons away. But the hat didn't really work, and she was embarrassed because she thought she had failed. And then she made a Helio cheese copter, um, and her great-great-aunt Rose, she kind of laughed at her too. Um, but the lesson that she gave her was that she only truly failed if she didn't try in the first place. So the lesson of the story is that in order to fail, you just don't try. But if you try, you've already succeeded because you're probably going to have to fail again to get it right. And so the lesson of the story is to try anyway, because then you've already succeeded if you've tried and what are the store what are the feelings that you have when the story is read to you um, and finally 
what feelings do you this does the story make you have how did you feel when you were listening to it and that's up to you so now we are going to get into an activity called magic rocks um so what i want you to do uh what we're going to be working with today is um is your body so the first tool of of you as an actor it's your body so that's what we're going to be using in our activity today called magic rocks so i want you to use your body to make yourselves into little and round rocks and every time i say magic rocks i want you to get into this magic rocks position so if i were to turn into a magic rock this is what it would look like so make yourself little and small and round right so if i say magic rock go like this not like this because this is more like a rectangle not like this because this is too big but little and round so what do you need to do to get little and round remember when we did the villain chest and we became a little bit smaller and then our faces when we were doing the warm-up made our faces really small like this right so let's do that but with our entire body so let's make our chest small make your back kind of round make yourself small make your face small and then just kind of shape like this so that's magic rocks if i say magic rocks looks magic rocks you do this okay from there so get into get yourself into magic rocks magic rocks okay stay there i'm going to tell you to turn into something and i want you to i hope you're still a magic rock stay small and round and little but still listen i want you to turn into what i tell you to turn into so i'm going to say magic rocks turns into and then you're going to do it so magic rocks turns into a giraffe show me your giraffe what does a giraffe look like so give me a tableau of a giraffe a frozen picture of a giraffe if i think of a giraffe i think of something with a tall and long neck and stands very tall so if i were to do a tableau of a giraffe it might look like this right okay now magic rocks stay there magic rock turns to a cat no give you give me a tableau of a cat uh give me a tableau of a cat okay if i were a tableau of a cat this might be what i look like um <laughs> is that a good cat show me a better cat give me a tableau of a cat show me what a cat looks like okay now magic rocks get back down be little small round stay there magic rock turns to a butterfly <laughs> show me your butterfly okay magic rocks magic rocks turns to a basketball player show me a tableau of a basketball player show me our basketball player small and tiny and sure do they keep in in like this or are they tall and athletic and usually shooting into a basket or dribbling right so if i were a tableau of a basketball player or if i was a magic rock that turned into a basketball player i'd probably look like this you like that surprised basketball player waiting for a shot okay um now magic rocks stay there now i want you to think about different emotions magic rocks turns to a sad butterfly show me a sad butterfly okay is that okay show me your sad butterfly magic rocks turns to a sad butterfly okay good job now magic rocks now magic rocks turns to a happy giraffe. 
So show me a tableau of a happy giraffe, not just a giraffe, but a happy giraffe. So maybe it's like this. <laughs> Sometimes, um, you know, you see them eating off of trees, so you could be like this. Right? Okay, good happy giraffe. Good job. Um, now let's see. Magic Rocks turns to Rosie Revere. Turn into Rosie Revere. Show me a tableau of Rosie Revere. If I were a tableau of Rosie Revere, I'd probably look like this. She always has a tool in her hand and she's thinking about what she's going to build next. All right. Um, good job on your activity. Um, I will have another lesson for lesson three um, next week or in a couple of days. Um, so stand by. Now, how did today's lesson make you feel? Take the next uh, few seconds to think about how you felt when you did this lesson. How did it feel to use your body as a tool for acting? How did that feel? Were you excited? Were you nervous? Were you scared? Um, were you bored? Uh, were you happy, joyful? Think about how you felt. Okay. Um, now, uh, next week we are going to be learning pantomime. Today we learned about tableau, which is a frozen picture. Um, but next week we are going to learn about pantomiming, which is to move your body and to act something out. So on the count of three, say drama class. One, two, three, drama class.